Let's do this. Remember, okay, first and foremost, when you first learned how to find inverse functions, and when you went through it again last year, what you first talked about was um, not all functions have an inverse function. And you learned that in order for a function to have an inverse function, it has to pass the horizontal line test. Do you remember that? So for example, when you have a function that looks like this, it does pass the horizontal line test, meaning its inverse is a function. It has an inverse function. But if you've got a parabola, it does not pass the horizontal line test, meaning it does not have an inverse function. So now, taking that with us to trig, you can see that when I graph a sine function, it definitely does not pass the horizontal line test. So does that mean we're just doomed to never talk about inverse functions? Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> just like in the parabola, it's not so easy. Just like in the parabola, one way around it was to just take half of the parabola, right? Because now that would have an inverse function. In the case of the sine function, we can do the same. So look at this. That's the full-fledged sine function. However, if I were to only take one portion of it, right, just that function, in the green, now that does pass the horizontal line test, and I can find the inverse function of that one, okay? So, what I've done here is I'm just taking that green part, and I'm going to throw away the rest, meaning I have restricted the domain of the sine function from all reals to just that. And let's see how much we did restrict it. This point here, that's negative pi over 2, and this is positive pi over 2, right? So the only part that I'm taking it is uh, that I'm taking is from negative to positive pi over 2. Okay? Now, um, let's see which angles we took with us when we did this. So we have 0, and then moving to the um, right, I have pi over 6 pi over 4, pi over 3, right? And then you've got pi over 2. And then on the opposite side, I've got negative pi over 6, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 3. Okay? Let's think about it a different way. Suppose I was on the unit circle. Okay? This is 0, this is pi over 2, and now if I take the stuff from the 0, uh, from the x, from the y axis over to the right, what do I have? I have that region from 0 to pi over 2. So that's that quadrant, right? And I've got pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, correct? And then what other region do I have? This region, where does that correspond to the unit circle? That's the region from 0 to negative pi over 2, which here, it's the bottom, correct? 0 to negative pi over 4. So negative pi over 3, I'm sorry, 6. So now, my restricted domain, uh, that's a 3, and then negative pi over 2. So now my restricted domain only corresponds to those two quadrants, okay? Now, okay, so let's talk about something else. When I restricted the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, the range, right, it's still from negative 1 to 1, correct? But now, so let's take a look. So for my f of x, the domain is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and the range is from negative 1 to 1. But 
when I take a function and I go to the inverse function, right? When you learned how to find inverse functions of like a parabola, right? What was the first thing you did? Switch x and y, correct? Mm -hmm. And when you switch x and y, you also switch with it all of the domain and all of the range, right? So if the domain for f of x was negative to positive pi over 2, that now becomes the range for the inverse, okay? And the range of f now becomes the domain of the inverse, okay? All right? So now, okay, so before my y values for sine of x were from negative 1 to 1, correct? Now for inverse functions, my y values are going to be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and the x values are going to be from negative 1 to 1. We're, all this is going to become a lot less, you know, mysterious in a minute. So with this, once we restrict the domain, we can now find the inverse sine function. The way we write that is inverse sine like this, sine to the inverse one, uh, negative one, or arc sine of x. Those two mean the same, sine minus one or arc sine. Okay, so we're not going to graph the inverse sine function here, but when you do graph the inverse sine function, so you see the, the red here, I'll, I'll highlight it. The inverse of that Actually, when you graph, it looks like this bottom one here. Okay, so when you graph the inverse sign, do you see how it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 on the y-axis and negative 1 to 1 on the x-axis? Okay, what does it all mean? Okay, what does it all mean? Until now, I would give you this sine of pi over 3, and you would say, that's root 3 over 2. Yes? Now we're going to switch it up. Now I'm going to ask you inverse sine of root 3 over 2, which means, right, if I was walking down the street and I saw that on a billboard, just that on a billboard, I would say, oh, someone's looking for the angle for which the sine is root 3 over 2, right? And you would all tell me, oh my God, Ms. Malikian, that's how much? Pi over 3, okay? I know. Right? Yeah. So. One day, one day, we're gonna, we're gonna see him. We're one day, him. and you're gonna think, Matt. I think we should make a billboard. I know. I think we should pitch in, just buy a billboard. I'll see this, I'll email you all. <laughs> so, the number that goes in here represents a number in the domain, okay? That represents a number in the, that's a member from the domain, and the domain for now is negative one to one. So in that parentheses, that's now the new domain for the f of f, of f inverse. You can only have numbers that go from negative 1 to 1. So for example, I can never have inverse sine of 4 because that's not from negative 1 to 1. These values here, the answer to the inverse sine question, these are members from the range, and they go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Domain and range, yes. Yeah. Now, in other words, the answer to inverse sine of x, okay, is always going to be the angle. And that has a range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so moving forward, is it an absolutely emergent question okay okay then if not later okay so because I'm on a roll here Gabe I'm on a roll okay so okay now find the exact value of each expression okay the answers to these are the angles now remember our domain is restricted from negative 1 to 1 our range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 what we did, I'm just going to draw that here again. This is going to be your friend. You just have to know it, right? The only thing that is um, 
The only angles that are included in this realm of inverse sine, okay, are the ones on the right. So for example, from negative pi over two to zero to pi over two. And again, these were pi over three, pi over four, pi over six, and so on. So in essence, I can erase everything on the opposite side, and that's all that remains in this realm. How many total angles are these? Okay, it's somewhere in the middle there. Nine, nine. We finally hit it. Nine, eight, seven, nine. There are nine angles, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Meaning, when you have an inverse sine problem, the only answers you can possibly have are one of those nine numbers. Okay, always. So, for example, where is 7 pi over 4? Is it on the, is it part of the 9? No. So it can never be an answer. All right? Um, can you put that? Okay. And that's all. Thank you. Yes. Because that's not cool. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. All right. <clears throat> so here we have inverse sine of root 2 over 2. What's the angle for which the sine is root 2 over 2? Pi over 4. Fabulous. Inverse sine of negative 2 pi. Why not? Okay, what? Okay, this is a trick question. Because what did we say? We said the number in here should always be between negative 1 and 1. But negative 2 pi has a value of how much? Ne Negative 2 pi itself is negative 6.28, right? It's a trick question. It, that is a value of negative 6.28. It's not in the domain. Must be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so this one you just say not possible. Either, it, you know. Okay, you know what? Let me give you some more examples here. Part C, why don't we do inverse sine of negative a half? Where is sine equal to negative one half? For what angle? Okay, is two pi over three in that domain? Okay, so sine of pi over three is root three over two. So that's not the one. For what angle is sine one half? Pi over six? Negative pi over six. Okay? Yes. So, sine of pi over six is a half. So when you want sine to be negative a half, it's got to be the equivalent of, or the, the corresponding angle to pi over six in the negative quadrant. So that's negative pi over six. Okay. Now, Equals negative, equals negative pi over 6. So now let's identify one other thing. The top quadrant, right, it, our sign, is sign positive or negative in the top quadrant? Positive. positive. What about in the bottom quadrant? Negative. negative. So when you want an angle for which sign is negative, you're going to go in one of the bottom angles. When you want sign to be positive, you're going to go in one of the top angles, right? So what's sign of 2 pi over 3? 2 pi over 3 is here. Not so sine of 2 pi over, uh, sine of, uh, or sorry, sine of 7 pi over 6. Sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative a half, right? Look, the, remember from like section 3, from what you had on the quiz. Sine of 7 pi over 6, it is negative a half, okay? But why can't that be an answer here? Because it's not in the domain. Because where is 7 pi over 6? It's right here. Look at how far away it is from the restricted domain. Here. 7 pi over 6 is here, right after the pi. Do you see how it's not even close to there? Okay, Z and then G. Um, so Jack, because sorry. The, um, in the circle, we only have like uh, the first and fourth quadrant. Uh -huh. um, if you have R cosine. Okay, cosine we haven't gotten to yet. Okay, okay? yeah. 
And zero. Yeah, so it's it's the special angle values, right? It's whatever you have on the unit circle. So one half root three over two, root two over two, and so on. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so now let's move on to the cosine function. Same way, you have to restrict the function for the cosine, right? So for the cosine, I take this. Right? That's how I restrict the domain. Right? So you see how for the cosine, it can't be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 because that wouldn't be, um, that wouldn't pass the horizontal line test either. Right? So for cosine, my restrictive domain is from 0 to pi. Okay? So now, when I draw the unit circle, right, I'm going to go from 0 to pi. So those two quadrants. So which angles are we talking about? Pi over 3, pi, I'm sorry, pi over 6. And then pi over 3 here, pi over 2. And then what's next? 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 6. How many total angles? 9 again. And again, you've got one quadrant where it's positive, one quadrant where it's negative, right? You're going to have that every single time, okay? So now, inverse cosine of 1, what do you guys think? For which angle is cosine 1? How much? 0. Can we say 2 pi? No, right? 2 pi, yes, physically on the unit circle, it's here. But... Where is 2 pi on the restricted domain? Like in another country practically, right? So we can't use 2 pi. Yeah. Um, so if you give us a problem like this, we're not going to see both the graphs. We're not going to see the graph. No. It'll just be inverse cosine of 1. Okay. Arc cosine, which is the same thing as inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2. You guys sure? Yeah? yeah? 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Okay? So if you go to 5 pi over 6 here, right, the cosine is the root 3 over 2, right? Okay, inverse cosine of negative 2? Huh? Negative 3 over 2. You sure? Isn't that like the arc cosine of negative 3 pi over 2? Like, like, like the cosine of negative 3 pi over 2 is also 5 pi over 6. So what's the difference, like, what's the difference for that one? Is the, the, the cosine of like negative 3 pi over 2 is also 5 pi over 6? So I don't understand how this would be. The cosine of 3 pi over 2? Or no, no, of negative 3 pi over 2. So negative 3 pi over 2 is here, though. But that, but the cosine there would be zero. Wait. The cosine there would be zero. You mean root three over two or three? Yeah, yeah, root three. Okay, so say the question again. Okay. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Then the cosine of uh, root three over two isn't that also the same? The inverse cosine of positive root three over two. You mean? Is that what you mean? Um, well, yeah, well, no, just, just normal cosine of negative, uh, pot, like, negative square root 3 and then over 2, or just, just normal cosine. Okay, so if you had a normal cosine, also right, but, but if you had normal cosine, it would be like this, cosine of 5 pi over 6, and then your answer would be uh, root 3 over okay. 2. Okay, inverse cosine of negative 2, what, is this between negative 1 and 1? No, so it's no solution or not possible. Sure. Okay. Next. Yep. For which one? For the cosine, the domain is from 0 to pi. The restricted domain is from 0 to pi. And then the range is always negative 1 to 1. Okay, now let's go for the tangent. 
So tangent, it kind of, you know, does its own, right? Because look, you've got one arm of the tangent like this, and that's enough, like that's all we can take, and it passes the horizontal line test. The difference though is, okay, so yes, we're gonna go from negative pi over two to pi over two, again, like the sine, similar to the sine, but it's different in that the tangent is undefined from at negative pi over two and pi over two. So when I take the unit circle, right, from negative pi over two to pi over two, I've got zero, pi over six, negative pi over six, right, the pi over fours, negative pi over three, but then pi over two and negative pi over two are where the tangent is undefined. So those get eliminated from my domain, meaning now I even have fewer angles, just seven. So technically, I mean, theoretically, if you have an inverse tangent problem, you could just throw one of the seven angles over there and you've got one seventh chance to get it right, okay? So inverse tangent of one, raise your hand, somebody. Inverse tangent of one. Okay, thank you for raising your hand. But next time you gotta raise your hand. Pi over four. Okay, now somebody raise your hand. Arc tan of root three over three. Arc tan of root three over three. Um, pi over six. Pi over six. So you have to ask yourself, you know, for what angle is the tangent root three over three? Okay, again, let me remind you this again. I said it once, but I'll say it again. For tangent of the pi over three and pi over six, 30 and 60, you have two possibilities. Root three, one over root three, which is root three over three, okay? This is the smaller one. And this is, I'm sorry, this is the larger number. And this is the smaller number, okay? This is the tangent for the smaller angle because that ratio is small. This is the tangent for the larger angle because that ratio is bigger. Okay, yeah. I don't think negative or positive. Oh, so in the first quadrant, in the top quadrant, is tangent positive or negative? Positive. positive. And then in the bottom quadrant, oh, I think negative. Okay. okay, so, all right. We're good with this? Yeah. Okay. So here's one representation, like it's basically the summary of everything we've done, okay? Um, so these are basically different representations of the same thing. This is from another book that I like to throw in here because it's got the domain and the interval and then it also says like the um, quadrants, right? So sine has one and four, tangent has one and four, cosine has one and two, okay? Here we go. So, um, let's move on. Sine of arc sine of a half. So we start from the inside, right? What's arc sine of a half? Pi over six, okay. And then what's sine of pi over six? One half. So basically when you have sine and arc sine, they do kind of cancel each other out. It's like doing x divided by three times three. But you have to make sure that the argument here, like the stuff inside, is within the domain. Okay? Okay. Okay, here. All right. Start from the inside. What's inverse tangent of one? Somebody raise your hand. Inverse tangent of one. Pi over four, all right. So now, inverse sine of one. Somebody raise your hand. Inverse sine of one. So we're looking for the angle for which sine is equal to one. Yeah. Pi over two. Sine is the y value, so up here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so now we're going to do sine of pi over four minus pi over two, which is sine of negative pi over four which is negative one over root two, okay? So it's all like coming back together, yes? 
Okay, now take a look at this next one. The next one says, I've got, okay, so find the exact value of sine of inverse cosine of four fifths. Okay, let's start from the inside here. That inside, it's saying inverse cosine of four fifths, which means, okay, the story behind this is, there is this mystery angle, the cosine of which is four fifths, okay? Let's draw a representation of that. The cosine is four fifths, yeah? So that's the angle we're talking about. You see that? That's that angle theta we're talking about. And then we know that this side is equal to three, that missing side, yeah? So now, if I go back outside, right, what's the sign of that mystery angle? Three over five. Okay? So, I have a mystery angle. The cosine is four fifths. Find the sign. There it is. Now, were you all, are you always going to, you know, have like these perfect cute little numbers? No, you're going to have roots and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. Yeah. These meaning, so I do post the notes after we finish a chapter. So after we finish this, I'll post it. It'll be on my jag. Okay, so next one. <coughs> okay, we want cosine of arc sine of x, right? Okay, now this is a little bit different. Let's still draw this inside. There is a mystery angle, the sine of which is x, meaning it's x over 1 like this, yes? Okay, can I find the missing side on the bottom? Let's call that a. It's going to be a squared plus x squared is equal to 1 squared. a squared is 1 minus x squared. A is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay? Now, you can figure out this pattern, guys. If you're missing a leg, it's always going to be the square root of the larger number squared minus the smaller number squared. Larger number squared minus the smaller number squared. Okay? Um, now I have a triangle with all three sides. Can I find the cosine of theta? No, because it's 1 minus x squared and it's both sides together. Okay? And then this is just root 1 minus x squared. Are we okay with this one? Yes. Okay, so next one. Tangent of inverse cosine. Right? So let's draw a triangle. Inverse cosine is x, so that means the cosine is x over, uh, inverse cosine of x, the cosine is x over 1. This, right, this side is the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the leg squared. Okay? You can do the Pythagorean theorem or you can do that, it's up to you. And then what's the tangent here? Correct. Okay. We're good. All right. So, okay. You can't, okay. So suppose you have the square root of nine minus four, right? Is that the same as like the square root of 9, 3 minus the square root of 4, 2? Is that, is that equal to 1? Let's see, what is this equal to? It's the square root of 5, which is not 1, right? So you can't distribute a square root like that, okay? 